Hello, I am Maloon, and this is Wong Kar Wai's universe. Back in summer of 2020, just before the start of my first academic year as a set design student, the discovering of Wong Kar Wai's creative work was a true revelation to me. Just like for many people, my first movie, though by chance, has become in the mood for love. The shot's composition, the use of light and shadow, colors and textures, the style and fashion of the shown era, the way music and sound are used in the narrative. I'm pretty sure I've watched other films with thorough approach to execution before, but this time, it was definitely different. And so, In the Mood for Love was followed by Fallen Angels, Chunking Express, Days of Being Wild, and 2046. And every time, Car Wai managed to make me feel pleasant dreaminess, nostalgia, and bitter sadness at once. Undoubtedly, good half of this effect form simple yet captivating short stories and Wong being a highly literary director. But right now, I'd like to take a look at these films through eyes of an artist and to point out what to appreciate about them. The invasion of the new wave of the 90s, with its leaning to stylistic experiments and, at the same time, orientation to commercial cinema, led to Hong Kong's genre works to be often looked at as avant-garde examples compared to their western analogues. And vice versa, those few films presented to public as art house seemed indecently commercial next to the European festival products. David Bordwell, film theorist and film historian, even came up with a new term to describe this phenomenon, avant-pop cinema. And according to him, The most prominent representatives in this field are Stanley Kwan and Wang Karwai. Having started his collaboration with cinematographer Christopher Doyle, whose work would later become the hallmark of his films, Karwai captures the melancholic atmosphere common for Hong Kong dramas, paradoxically combining it with a visual solution in the style of MTV clips and dynamic Godard jump cuts. Fallen Angels and Chunking Express, specifically, are the quintessence of the style-obsessed Hong Kong cinema of the 90s. Walking out of a theater, you may not remember all the details of the storylines, but images from them will probably stay in your memory for a long time. Roger Ebert wrote, You will enjoy these films because of what you know about cinema, not what you know about life. But in reality, Wong Kar Wai, with his ornate style, only emphasized the cinematography of real life in Hong Kong, shooting scenes in real bars, shops, subway stations, and even in the homes of his crew. For instance, Christopher Doyle's apartment in which Tony Leung's character lives in Chunking Express. In fact, the city in Kar Wai's films is, at certain moments, an independent character as in the case of Chunking, but in most, it transforms under the influence of the characters, becomes a kind of a litmus paper reacting to what's happening on the screen. Each film has to be different, notes Doyle. In narrative style, in structure, in its so-called look, Wong is proudly polystylistic. Days of Being Wild has a languid rhythm with soft lighting and long takes. Chunking Express is all high-key available light shooting, while Fallen Angels indulges in an almost unprecedented visual grotesquerie in performance and camera work. Not only are the characters always shrieking or brooding, but the outrageous wide-angle shooting turns them into gargoyles. Karwai himself says in the interview to Bomb magazine. In Chunking, we were shooting from a very long distance with long lenses, but the characters seem close to us. And in Fallen Angels, 
the characters were shot with an extremely wide angle. The camera is very close to the actors, but they seem far away. The purpose of cameras in both films is that they are just like civilian cameras. And you really notice this in almost all of his movies. While rewatching In the Mood for Love, I often got myself thinking that I, myself, was becoming an unwitting spectator, or rather a neighbor, behind a wall, listening to off-screen dialogues. And this is to be expected. In Carway's works, there is no feeling that the world around is set for the camera, rather as if he subtly depicts everyday life. But this is just the top layer, because as soon as you start analyzing every scene, you realize how everything is thought through. The composition, character's movement or their placement in a frame, color design, style, style especially, and I like to emphasize it. This is William Chung Suk Ping, producer and a person who worked with Carwai on multiple projects, including In the Mood for Love. Thanks to him, the film has found its definitive charm and, perhaps, the grace that the character of Maggie Chung exudes. People think I'm obsessed with the Chong song, but it's not true. I use the Chong song because the scenes called for it, because it was what people wore during that period, because that dress is all about restraint. My mother and my aunties were Shanghai ladies. They never come out unless they're made up, coiffed, and dressed. Another thing is that the chong sounds I chose were supposed to look really tacky with the fabrics in loud, bad taste. But when Maggie Chong put them on and Christopher Doyle did his lighting and with all the other elements, the chong sounds ended up looking beautiful and glamorous. In the end, it's all about presentation, isn't it? Talking about West and East, he also notices. I think the best thing in Hong Kong is how both cultures come together. It's not like that anywhere else. This is so special. We should make use of this thing. It's in our education, our identity. You can use the Western side of you, or you can use Eastern side whenever you want. Taking his words and Hong Kong's cultural origins into account, I'd personally say that image in Carl Wise movies can be associated with the eclecticism of European modernist style. A human figure surrounded by bright abstract spots, flecked with real objects and ornaments. I see a certain similarity in the fact that modernist artists drew great inspiration and example from the paintings and graphic works of oriental art one of the features of which was the transition from a painting as a recreation of the visible world to a painting as a second reality, creating some other image of a reinterpreted environment, thus leading to a never-before-seen mix. Wong Kar Wai, shooting his films in a city where Eastern and Western cultures live side by side, elevate this phenomenon to the absolute. Most of the filmmaking in Hong Kong, even now, is very lyrical, very smooth, and always very traditional. Of course, MTV has become something very formulaic, but in the late 80s, when it was first shown in Hong Kong, everyone was really impressed with the energy and the fragmented structure. It seemed to new directors that they should follow it. Then there is Wang's signature slow motion, which unites both of these approaches. He goes on to stage his shots so that actions in different zones unfold at different rates. The most famous and most spirited example is the shot in Chunking Express in which Officer 633 is slowly drinking coffee at the snack bar as crowds flash by or dissolving melancholy in Fallen Angels, which lasts two minutes on screen, but it took 12 to shoot. And time is important in Carwise movies. 
The clock is shown very often not only to help us grasp the passage of time in Neverending Night, but the characters themselves are constantly watching it, laboring under due dates or meditating on missed chances and mistaken choices. They are all trying to master the unbearable lightness of the present moment, writes Larry Cross, to possess what can't be possessed, the passing of beauty and successful emotional expression. Wong's films center on isolated characters hanging out, usually to the accompaniment of soulful music. Like Ozu and other filmmakers interested in trans science, Wong fills his films with images of mutability, boiling clouds, wafting steam, and cigarette smoke, zigzag traffic patterns and pulsating city lights, shadows that drift across a landscape. These stretches of downtime are broken by sidelong conversations, bursts of physical activity, and epiphanic moments in which characters realize an ineffable truth about themselves or the world. This core rhythm of wistful waiting, disjointed interchanges, violent action, and epiphanic revelation is laid out in rich, vibrant images. And all of the above happens in very confined spaces, clashing and creating a visual concentrate for us to dissolve in. And in the moment of emotional climax, release, expansion, of the world around and boundless sky above characters. If you're listening to this part, I hope that you've perhaps learned something new noted these film's recommendations or simply enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for listening, this means a lot, especially given the fact that this movie essay was more of a pen test, and hopefully there's more videos like this to come in the future. With that, I thank you again for joining me, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>